Hello everyone, welcome to our final episode in our 10-part series covering all things math. Today, we'll explore the Doomsday Algorithm, an intuitive way to determine what day of the week any date on the calendar is. This algorithm does not involve much rigorous calculation, so it can be done completely mentally. First of all, before we get to what Doomsdays actually are, we have to familiarize ourselves with some prerequisite knowledge. Leap years occur once every four years, and they differ from regular years as they have 366 days in the calendar instead of 365, the extra day being February 29th. We will be using the Gregorian calendar for this video, as while it is not the most accurate calendar out there, it is the most commonly used. It contains a margin of error of only 27 seconds a year. That is one day every 3,236 years. A slight inconvenience when using the Gregorian is that not every fourth year is a leap year. When we look back to when the Gregorian was implemented in 1582, the Julian calendar was still in use. The average year under the Julian calendar was 365.25 days a year. This was an overestimation of almost a day per century, and astronomical observations such as the March equinox would occur before the calculated dates. Therefore, Pope Gregory XIII the then head of the Catholic Church commissioned the improved Gregorian calendar, whose average day was shortened by 0.075 days to 365.2425. So, how does this affect leap years? Well, the change of 0.075 days a year means that for every 400 years, there would be 97 leap years. Therefore, we have to consider another definition for leap years, which is Every year that is, that is exactly divisible by 4 is a leap year, except for years that are exactly divisible by 100. But these centurial years are leap years if they are exactly divisible by 400. For example, the years 1700, 1800, and 1900 are not leap years, but the years 1600 and 2000 are. While this information is definitely interesting to learn, it is not totally important when using the doomsday rule. Now, let's get back to the main focus of this video. The doomsdays are specific dates in the year that share the same day of the week. The easier dates to remember are the 4th of April, 6th of June, 8th of August, 10th of October, and 12th of December. Other dates are the 9th of May, 5th of September, 11th of July, and the 7th of November. A useful mnemonic for these dates is, I work 9 to 5 at 7-11. A special case is applied to the months of January and February, where it would be 3rd of January and 28th of February for 3 years, and the 4th of January and 29th of February for the leap year. And lastly, for the month of March, Doomsday would be Pi Day, or the 14th of March. The really unique characteristic of all these numbers is that for any given year, these dates all share the same day of the week. Therefore, if we know the date of one doomsday, we subsequently know every other doomsday and can simply ad adjust to the month nearest to the unknown date and add or subtract the difference in the number of days. In order to better visualize the days when doing mental calculations, we can convert all the days of the week to numerical expressions. Since we know that this algorithm treats days of the week like numbers modulo 7, we can use a mnemonic to recall the weekday relation quicker. Okay, we've now covered the conceptually harder parts of this algorithm. Now that we know the doomsdays, how do we actually find the day of the week of these dates in the first place? Well, it's actually very simple. If you look at the doomsdays at the start of every century, you will immediately notice a pattern. Doomsday in 1700 is Sunday, 1800 is Friday, 1900 is Wednesday, 2000 is Tuesday, and then the pattern repeats. Therefore, we can, we can identify an easy-to-memorize recurring pattern regarding the doomsday of each turn of the century. From these specific doomsdays, we add the years after the centennial along with the leap years, which is basically the amount of years divided by 4. You may think that adding years with days to find a day is strange, but it actually makes sense. If we were to write out the doomsdays following, say the year 1900, we would observe that the doomsday increases by 1 for every non-leap year, and then twice for a leap year. 
Here's an example of finding your doomsday in 2033 using mathematical notation. If you want to be even more efficient at finding the doomsday of a specific year, you can try to memorize even more dates that are very useful to quickly identify the doomsdays. It is a known fact that there are only 28 calendars, and patterns repeat. This means that if we take the beginning of a century to be the zero year, every 28th year would also be a zero year. The brilliant mathematician John Conway who came up with the doomsday algorithm, used a slightly more complicated variation of the 28 calendar trick, saying that for every 12th year, the doomsday would increase by 1. Here is a fully worked out example using all the skills we have previously taught. We recommend that you follow this same sequence to be as fast as possible in determining the doomsday and the unknown day of the week. And that's it! With a bit more practice, we are sure you will be able to recite these dates so fast, your friends will think that you actually memorized the entire calendar. The system humans have used to keep track of time is fascinating, and we have only covered a tiny piece of its history. Thanks so much for your attention, and good luck in all your future endeavors. Please subscribe for cookies.